Well, now we get the car shook down. We're gonna go ahead and uh, go ahead and put a Johnson lift. It's a limited travel. It's actually an LS part number. Um, just feel a little bit more comfortable revving the motor at 7,000 RPM with a, with a little better quality lift. These so far, it's been one of the weak points in this engine. So we have to rip the heads off because, like an LS or a Hemi, they're they're under the heads. So we'll get some. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and start tearing into it and uh, get some some video of it and whatnot. But the uh, so a couple, a couple of things you noticed too at the track last time, there was no vent in the transmission. It looked like it blew a little bit of fluid. So we're gonna run a uh, breather tank back to the trunk of the car, make it safe, safe. and then like I said, with the uh, any roll bar in the back, we're gonna go back, we'll be able to go back up and the car not twist and hopefully get it hooked and uh, improve upon that 1048. Uh, the goal is right now at 999 on pump gas. Uh, I think we can go ahead and do it. Everything seems like to be in line. 103 mile an hour on the eighth, it definitely shows potential. Um, 668th mile, we just gotta basically uh, go about three times quicker to the eighth, and we should be able to hit our goals. So let's get tearing into this thing and see what happens. Well, figured I'd give you guys an update. We're uh Tearing into the Godzilla. This is the uh, first time we've kind of uh, went up the heads off it. Uh, we have the uh, T-bar lifters from Johnson's and we're gonna go ahead and uh, do a little surgery. Get the uh, lifters changed out. We've already put the 410 in the back of the car now. Uh, we're planning to have this car at the NMRA at the end of the month. So a little bit, uh, we're hopefully gonna be able to a shootout against a T-bar with another Godzilla motor. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, not really sure how we're gonna do against him, but uh, we both run very similar ETs, but Right now, we're just uh, gonna take the valve covers off it and uh, rip the heads off. I'm not gonna uh, film too much of that. You guys have all seen somebody take a set of heads off before. So uh, once the head's off, we'll kind of get back to it and I'll kind of, we'll explain to why we're doing what we're doing and um, what's different about the parts we're using. So uh, just hold on for a minute. Well, we've kind of reached the point now where the heads are ready to come off. The uh, custom headers we had made are hanging down, which is nice in these cars. You can uh, just leave them in the car and rip the heads off. So. Uh, Next to the point now where the head's ready to come off. Uh, 10 head bolts, just like the typical Windsor. Uh, and we're gonna now, uh, he's gonna lift the head up so we can take a look inside, see what the Godzilla has for a lifter setup in it. I think you'd be a little surprised if you haven't already seen what these things are. All right, there we go. So there you can go. Head's off. Looks an awful lot like a uh, LS with the uh, lifter cartridges in there. So we'll be uh, taking those out and switching over to a T-bar limited travel lifter. So it's, uh, I'm not sure if the, if, how many of you guys realize, but the uh, one of the problems with the Godzilla or one of the small issues they have is the lifter durability isn't all that great. So with us wanting to turn more than 6,000 RPM and have it, this thing is more of a, uh, being raced or a drag and drive kind of car. We wanted to have not, not have an issue in the future. You know, we'll, we'll put some miles on this thing. So we're gonna tear, we want to tear into it, change the lift. It's pretty straightforward as you guys can see. 10 head bolts, um, pretty uh, simple gasket setup on it. It's got a nice multi-layer gasket and everything. Really, really great. It's a it's a super quality gasket. I know a lot of guys are running with boost already. So uh, actually in the Marauder, we're actually running the same gasket with, uh, you know, almost 900 rear wheel. So uh, let's, uh, Take a second here and I'll have uh, Nick take, take them out. So the tray in here, like like Mike was mentioning, it's, it resembles the LS and the LT setup. You just have one single tray basically holding your lifters in the bores. And it also keeps the lifters from spinning because they do lock into the tray themselves. As you can see right there, they can kind of only go in one way. They're indexed. Really cool. Yeah, kind of a, a funny fact about the, these lifters. Uh, Ford, a, along with the Godzilla, along with GM, the LS, and, and actually Dodge with the with the Hemi are, are all a uh, the same diameter lifter. So that's why we're able to go ahead and uh, use the Johnson lifter, which is actually an LS part number. So uh, let's get this stuff cleaned up a little bit, and we'll grab those for you. So there's your your Johnson part number for the lifters. Uh, really great set of lifters. I've used these in the past. These link bar lifters. They are short of travel. And they do recommend uh, 35,000 preload on here. Um, so with some of the LS stuff, you know, a turn, a turn and a half with certain ratio rockers is beneficial. 
with these 1.8 rockers. I believe the 1.8, correct? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna shoot for three quarters of a turn. That's gonna you're gonna get a little valve train noise due to the link bar, but that's okay. We're gonna shoot for minimal valve train noise with three quarters of a turn preload. And uh yeah, I mean these are just great lifters, and the bar also serves as the actual lifter tray. So this bar being here doesn't allow the lifter to spin, doesn't allow uh, deterioration on the camshaft under high RPM. It's just a, it's a really great quality piece and it is in spec and it's gonna float like a butterfly. Well, essentially it's also gonna stop, stop a failure point in the future too with the stock lifter and the plastic bucket. Correct. It has, a, it could it could rotate, damage the cam, damage the lifter. Um, I mean, this, it, this will obviously stop that from happening. You just compare the quality of the two, just the cups, the springs and how they're secured in there is just, yeah, most it's definitely, piece. it's a high quality piece. Great piece. Once you get everything lined up and centered where it's comfortable, it should seat in the bore just like that. Quite comfortable. All right, so we've reached the point now. We got, we got the push rods have come in. Uh, I don't think we explained to you guys how we came up with the, uh, the proper length. So it's pretty straightforward. Actually, Nick was nice enough to kind of, I'll kind of focus on this for a second, kind of explain what's going on. Uh, it's a bolt on rocker arm. It uses the eight by one, two, five thread. So one full turn is 049. So basically 49 thousands. These lifters require uh, between 25 thousands and 45 thousands uh, preload. So basically right now we're going to, he's gonna go torque it down. We're about, uh, uh, Eight tenths, seven and a half, eight tenths of a turn uh, into it. So let's put, so let's put us right in the middle of the uh, of the spec we're looking for. So like I said, I'll kind of zoom on this so you guys can kind of see how we figured it out. But like I said, basically with the uh, the lifter giving us that value of 035 as being the middle, we had a plus and minus of 10. So our spec is essentially 025 to 045 and us, or basically in the range of about eight to nine tenths of a turn uh, for preload. So. Yeah, my simple brain was able to tell me if you're less than a full turn, you're in spec. And that's the way I looked at it. Yeah, exactly, Nick. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead now, uh, Nick's gonna go ahead and put one of them in and uh, we're gonna torque it up. So just give us a quick second to get set up. All right, so we're while we were off camera, we went ahead and we put the uh, that lobe on the, on, the, on the base circle. So what that means is basically we're off the lobe or on the back side of the cam, which is the only time you can actually check preload. So what Nick's doing right now is he's pulling it down to the point where um, there's tension on it and there's no more lash, and then he's gonna go ahead and turn it until it basically, until it stops. And we're, like I said, we're looking for that, uh, about, about three, a little more than three quarters of the way around. Less than a full turn, I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, so. And then all, essentially all I'm using is my ratchet as a guide to keep me located as to where I am. You know, the, the, the bar, the ratchet will essentially be my, my straight. So as long as I don't come fully around, I know I'm under a full turn. Exactly. You know, so. Very good. Get the ratchet here. Get everything set up the way it wants to. Make sure your rocker is riding true. Right about there. Perfect. As you guys can see, he started out on the uh, pretty much um, at six at six <coughs> o'clock, and he ended up somewhere about five o'clock. So it puts us about what we talked <coughs> about. So right about about forty five thousands in that pre. But right at that point, so I mean, it's a difficult to be exact when you're tailing with thread and not actually a, uh, a feeler gauge. But uh, I feel confident we're in good shape. Uh, Nick and I got to come and finish this thing up. Uh, next time you see it, it'll be uh, be running, and I think we'll probably just put it back on the rollers real quick, just for a uh, a quick check.
lift the swaps complete, car's back up and running. Um, it was actually, like we said in the beginning, it's really straightforward. It's, it's not really a big deal. It's, it's getting the right push rod link, getting that preload set. And that's really the only technical part of that swap. I mean, uh, if, it's an, if you're an LS guy, you've obviously probably done this already yourself. This is not, the engine's not far, very far from each other. A lot of similarities, so we're excited. Uh, no, I feel more comfortable now going past 6500 RPM going to the traps. Uh, I'm not sure with the can being so small, it's the small uh, Cali's can, but you know, we wanted to have the availability to, to go past, you know, peak power to the traps. It's obviously going to be, any car going to be faster when you run them like that. So that's where we stand. We got the car now uh, swapped out. Lifters are in it, four tens are in it. Uh, we didn't video it. We, did, we put the any sway bar in from uh, UPR, under, under car. Under axle, I should really say, because it's tailpipe, so that fit real well. So um, I think we're going to go ahead and do a quick video on those in the future for you guys that haven't seen those before. They, they were exceptional. Here's another project right now we'll get in the shop that we're uh, messing around with twin, twin snipers on a tea bucket. So uh, always up to something. Guys, thank you for uh, following along with this project. Uh, please like, subscribe, you know, and, and, and share. You know what I mean? Let other people see what's going on in the shop. We really appreciate that a lot. Uh, we follow a lot of you other guys that are doing Godzilla swaps and things like that. Like at the, uh, you know, I've seen some really cool uh, trucks and some cars and uh, the Marauder, which, you know, I've probably seen a video, but it's definitely coming. I just, uh, you know, it's a customer's car and our focus is more on getting it done for him and, and making a video out of it. So I'll catch you guys later.